today, what I'm going to show you um, is using color to track data entry. So uh, Carol had sent this to me earlier in the week. Uh, somebody had submitted a ticket. Awesome. Asking for help. Um, and what they wanted, they asked, is there a way in future projects to have the user interface change color when a field is completed versus incomplete? Uh, they say that they tried making fields mandatory, but that it hurt their workflows, um, especially when there's like multiple paths to each piece of data. Um, so I, my first thought was, I, I don't know exactly what that meant by user interface. So my, what I took from that is maybe just showing the, changing the label color. Uh, that would be the easiest thing. Um, so uh, my first thought was using JavaScript to set this color or apply a uh, CSS styling property to it. Um, the And then my next thought was trying to figure out how to fire that JavaScript uh, when there's a value in a field. And then um, from that, I had to figure out how to do it when it's different fields. So I have a version of each field that we can have. The calculated field isn't on here because it's technically just a text box. So I figure the code should work for that as well. Um, but we have a text box, a notes box, yes, no buttons, radio buttons, check boxes, and a slider. Um, so anytime I do this, anytime I mess with JavaScript, my first thing is to check the inspect tab in Chrome so I can see what um, element I'm looking for. So let me slide this over here so we can see it. Uh, so if I hit inspect here, this is the input that I want to act on uh, if it has a value. And then this is the label. And you can see down here, it gives me the, the hierarchy of, of HTML tags. And so what I really want to do is it's within a div, within a div, um, within this label um, tag, this label element. And you don't have to do all of this, you know, this, 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 and this, and this. Basically, you just want the second div of this label with this ID. Um, same. So once you figure that out, and it, and it's a it's it's kind of some trial and error. So like what I like to show you how I work is once I've kind of narrowed down on here, I'll go to the style element the element style up here and I'll just do background color and then I'll do red. And then I can see that once it applies that style, I know I'm targeting the exact uh, element that I need. And sometimes if you can see down here where this border collapse is crossed out, that means that that, that style is being applied somewhere else. So you can see it's up here uh, and it's being inherited at the table level. So sometimes if I do that and it doesn't, if this what didn't change to red, sometimes I have to put important because what that's doing is that's going to overrule any other styling rule that, that is being applied somewhere else. So it just bubbles that up to the top. So that's the most important rule. Um, but since it's working, I don't need to use the important, but that's something to try. If, if you're in the area and it's not doing what you want it to do, um, that's another tip. So that's, that's for the label. Now I had to figure out, um, and check if this has a value. And for that, I'm going to bring in my, my JavaScript just so I can walk you through it. Um, so this is just some housekeeping code. Uh, I'm assigning variables. So that way, if I ever wanted to tinker with the colors or change the colors, I can just change it here instead of having to change it everywhere throughout my code. Uh, so I'm just using those variables down here. So text color, no value is here. Uh, text color, if it has a value is here, uh, those kinds of things. Because what I'm doing is 
I'm applying a color to the text, a color to the background, and I'm adding some padding to, to give uh, there's some room because you can see here the the text is right up against the edge here. So I'm bumping that in a little bit and then adding some padding on the top and the bottom uh, with this with this variable here. So this is the code that I, I wrote for the text box. And uh, you can see here in the in the inspect window here, it's label and uh, the number sign is is denotes that it's an ID value. So label dash text underscore box is what I'm targeting. And I'm targeting the second div. I have to have both divs here because they're nested. If I just did one div, it would do the outer div. And so I want the inner div here. So this is my jQuery variable or element that I'm I'm targeting. And it's it's, it has an ID of label dash text underscore box because I named my field text underscore box just so um, to make things clear. And this is div and div. And then what I'm doing is I'm applying this CSS value, these CSS values. And this is wrapped in an if statement. So this is saying that if the input for this field is not blank, so this means not equal to blank, um, then I want it to style it as if it has a value else i want to style it if it doesn't have a value so that's for the text box it's pretty much the same for the notes box uh once again my my field is called notes box so if you if you use this code uh this is the value you want to change the dash tr you want to leave and the text area you want to leave because in here if if I highlight this again, you'll see that within this span, there's an input for the text box. But if I go to the notes box and inspect, there's not an input field. It's a it's called text area. And you can see that down here. Same thing with radio buttons. That's going to be different as well because each one of those is going to be different. Uh, it's not a it's not an input field. Uh, essentially, it's a radio button. So if I highlight one of those. It's a span and within the span, oh, there is an input, but it has a type of radio. Now I'm doing this one a little differently because you can see here that this is an, this one is opt yes, no. And then this one is gonna be, um, sorry, yes, no one. And then this is, should be yes, no zero. Cause that's the value. So that's how RedCap builds those. Um, and it's the same thing for these here. There's three of them. Uh, you can see here there's three choices, and within each one, it, it has the, the radio button uh, two, and then one should be, I think this one's one, this one's two, and this one's three. And then the check boxes are a little different as well. So it's the same sort of structure than with the radio buttons where it has the uh, choice or is class, but in here now the type is checkbox. And then you can see here that the value is ID dash underscore underscore check underscore underscore checkbox RC1. So this is RC1, this is RC2, this is RC3. And then for the slider, I'm not messing with this part of the slider. I only care about this uh, box. And that has a, has a, that's an input box, but it also has a, a class of slider num. You can see down here in the bottom corner, slider num. So this is how I work. I just, you know, slowly try to piece things together and figure things out. Uh, what I do is I start with the first one. So I did the text box. I built the code around that, made sure it was working right, and then started building the others. Um, so you can see here that the notes box is the same as the text box. The only difference is this, this is input and this is text area. Um, and then here I'm grabbing the the value of the yes, no input. So there is an input. Um, the way with the radio buttons, you can only check one value. And so RedCap has a field where it's storing that value. Even though you click on a radio button, that there's a field that RedCap puts that value in. And that's what I'm grabbing for the input here. 
and then I'm I'm styling the label. And then the same thing with the uh, radio buttons. So this is the yes, no, which is essentially a radio button that's just hard coded for yes, no. And this is your custom radio buttons here. And so basically all, all four of these are similar. The only difference with the notes box is the text area code. Now the check boxes is where it gets interesting because basically I have a nested if statement where I'm checking if the first checkbox is checked or the second box is checked or the third checkbox is checked. So it could be any combination of one, two, or three, as long as one of those boxes are checked, one or more of those boxes are checked rather. If none of those boxes are checked, that's when I want the code to change. So if any of these have a value, I'm gonna mark it as has a value. If not, no value. And then the slider number is similar to the yes, no, where I just want the, it's the input, but I have to put this slider num here uh, to, to target in on that, that box uh, here. So what I've done is I've, I've wrapped all this in a function. So this is a function called check blanks. And so it's doing all of this every time. And now I have to run the function. So the way I have it set, and I had to tinker with this because sometimes it would fire, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, sometimes I had to leave the field in order for it to work. Um, then the other thing is uh, when you have values here, uh, if you click reset, I had to have the code fire on any time the reset was clicked, uh, things like that. So basically right now I have the code running when the feet, when the form opens. And, it, and it's, not, it's not working right now because I have it, have it disabled. Uh, but I'll enable it and I'll show you how it's working. And then I also run the code anytime that the reset link is clicked. And that's that has an anchor with a class of small link. So if we inspect that again here, uh, you can see that there any any of these resets have an anchor a dot small link. <clears throat> so I don't really have to be very specific. I could just say anytime, and this is a, a nice way to capture all of those. So I don't have to say within the slider, I want the reset within the slider. And then I have to write code for the reset in the radio button and, you know, over and over. Anything that has a small link, a dot small link, if you click on it, it's going to run the code. And that's the nice thing of using the class uh, attribute or class value here instead of the ID. When you use an ID, it's very specific to that uh, element whereas the class can be applied to multiple uh, elements. And then finally, I'm running the, the code anytime the document changes. Uh, and then this is the nice thing about jQuery is you can do uh, statement chaining. So I'm doing it anytime the document changes, anytime a field, uh, anytime there's focus, anytime the, there's a blur, which means that it loses focus and anytime the mouse moves. So it's basically just running all the time. It's gonna check. So that way um, I'm kind of covering all my bases. So now that I've uh, put you guys to sleep with all the code talk, I'll show you how it, how it works. Uh, so let me go to the external modules here. And all I do is, so you enable it, and then all you do is you just copy and paste all this code into the code window here. And then I just have this set for the data, data entry pages is always on. So now when we go back to add a record, uh, you can see now that all the, the labels uh, are red. So that's applying this style here for all these labels. Um, it's giving it, because all of those val all those fields have, have no value. Uh, but as soon as I start typing in, it'll change to green. And if I select a value here, uh, and I can select any of these values here, but as soon as I deselect a value, it pops back up. And then as soon as I select a value in the slider, it turns to green. Now, if I click reset here, it's going to check. And, and because I click this one, it's the code is running through all these fields. So even though, um, even though this is the only one that has, doesn't, wouldn't have a value by clicking reset, it's going to check them all. And then it's only going to change the one that doesn't have a value. So if I uncheck these and then uncheck those, 
uh, you can see. And then you can see that it doesn't automatically uh, change, but when you're entering data, you're never gonna stay in the same, same place. So you're either gonna tab out of a field or you're going to uh, move your mouse. So if you move the, you can see here that now it's reset. It hasn't updated, it hasn't run the code yet, but as soon as I move my mouse, it, it, it fires and updates. Um, so this would be a way to alert people to uh, any empty fields. The thing is, if you have a form that has hundreds of fields on it, uh, you pretty much have to build uh, one of these if statements for every form. So that's one of the reasons I did it with all these different uh, field types, because if you have a form that's that has 50 checkboxes, you can grab this chunk of code and copy and paste and then just change the names. Um, once again, this is the name of the field, this checkbox right here. Uh, radio buttons, yes, no. This way, if you're using the code, it's easy for you to tell what code you've selected. Um, and I can show you in the in the designer here. So you can see this one's called text box, notes box, yes, no, radio buttons, check box, and slider. And so that's, that's just to kind of help um, with the code, just ease of, you know, because if I called it field one, field two, field three, um, you'd really have no idea what those pertain to when you looked at the code and you'd have to go back to your design. Um, so you would have to put this in for every field that you wanted it to apply to. And, and it doesn't prevent you from saving them um, when they're blank. All it does is just show you that they're blank. And so if you don't want to have the the hard coded, you know, this field is required to prevent you, which I think, you know, for most things you'd want that because you don't want people um, ignoring required fields. But if you just want something that's like a visual and you could combine that as well. Uh, but if you just wanted a visual to show that a field is blank and needed a value, uh, this would be a good way to do that. We also had another project a while back that that um, would use branching logic to show like if the fields in a section were blank uh, and you could have a header that said that, you know, had the name of the section and then had incomplete. And then as soon as you filled in all the fields, it would switch to complete. Uh, and that used other fields, you know, the, the complete incomplete values were, were put in a field with calc text and the branching logic is what uh, what it used to trigger, whether it showed the value is complete or incomplete. Um, so, but if you don't have sections, uh, you can do it this way. I have two quick things. Sure. Maybe not quick. Um, first off, you, you missed the date or date time sure. field. Uh, isn't that under the text box? Oh, it might it's be. About, You're yeah, right. It's just, I, it's just I, a validation. I date. Let's see. Yeah, probably, you're right. It probably should work, but I was wondering. Yep, awesome. And then um, <clears throat> what if people have it embedded? That's probably a whole nother thing, isn't it? Yeah, if it's embedded, because this is using the, the label, uh, and when you have the field embedded, that label doesn't get displayed. Right. Um, so this works great if you don't use embedding. So, and I you could still much. use embedding. It's just you have to code it differently because right, you have to do more work. Right, right, right. Yeah, because you're not. Um, so, like, let's see. What you would, what I think here. Let me try this because I'll show you. Um, what you would probably want to do then is have a table, and. And then what you could do in here is um, within your text box, you could do uh, like ID. Like that. Because the nice thing about doing it this way is that you have uh, the power to add your own values for the, the attributes. 
uh, instead of having red cap build them for you. So if you had this, now this gives has its own value, this text box embed. And so I could take that code where TD slash uh, or pound sign text box embed. Um, and it, it's a little different because when you're working with tables, sometimes the background color or something doesn't, um, you have to go, you know, dip, like if you had it in the TR element, the TR element wouldn't, the table row element wouldn't work. So if I did uh, table row background color black, see, you can see here that, so it's giving the whole thing black. And if we go, sorry, if we go back to here and I take red off, it's going to give me the whole row um, instead of just that that uh, table data element. Yeah, this is really sweet, though. I didn't expect you to have an answer within a week. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually done it that afternoon. Um, no way. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, with embedding, it's just you would have to, um, and it's it's the full oh. label and. Yeah, you would just have to, and you know, this is such a nice feature to be able to grab these and see where it's highlighting. Um, and I really like being able to apply the styles right away because then I could see uh, what's working and what's not working. Um, so, I uh, anybody have any other any other questions um, or want me to explain anything? I know it's a lot of code. It looks like a lot of code. Um, but really it's it's like this. This is basically the concept you need to know. And then um, it's just repeated for every field. The only difference is to check these two down here. Um, and even then, those are this this part of it is the same. It's just knowing how to how to filter these values for you know it uh, check boxes and knowing what. Uh, changes you have to make. So this one's just the slider num, the rest of them are inputs, and then that's a text area. Um, and I like that you can use variables for the CSS values because uh, this is allowing you to put multiple CSS properties in one statement instead of having to do like four, three or four different statements for each one of these. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, and if I, you know, this is black, this is uh, white, this is black. So if I wanted to change that to blue, I could change it here instead of having to copy and paste like all through these values, and which is going to be nice if you have uh, a form that has, you know, 50 to 100 fields or something like that. And you tweak it and you go, you know what, I don't, because <laughs> believe it or not, I did sit here and mess with this. And I was like, yeah, that's a little too red. That's a little too green. Um, because the problem with having something like this change to black is you know and white it's like you want to make it readable in the contrast so i got tired of having to go and copy and paste and it's it's kind of easy in, in visual studio code to do it because you can just um do a find and replace but even then is having the that's kind of a pain too so it's nice to just be able to change that one value uh and and tweak it and then pop your code back in the javascript injector and and try it again so also you didn't really point out the nice feature of adding the padding oh yeah so yeah it's just a little bit of padding it's not enough to be like you know a huge box but it's, it's nice i popped that off a little bit yeah and and that was the reason i added it to both because i did only have it on the the red because that's the alert and and it was weird because then it kind of jogs back to the left if you fixed it and then it jogged back out to the right if you didn't. So I'd put the padding on both, which that this value could actually be added using the CSS injector. So you're not having to assign the value here. But once again, it's the same sort of thing where you wanna be able to, if you're tink tinkering with something, it's nice to be able to, to make the changes in one area um, and not have to go from one module to do the, the JavaScript and then go back to the other module to change the, the padding. Um, for it. I agree that that's really elegant. Um, also in, you know, setting up those variables so that can be reused over all the CSS statements and whatever. I think that's a sweet one, one place I wanted to 
point out that it could be used, although I'm, everybody can probably come up with their own. Um, so let's say you're doing an intake and you're missing um, a non-required field. You only made it non-required because you didn't want to hold up, let's say, a survey intake. So somebody is entering a survey and you, uh, you know, which brings up another point. I don't know if you, this can be separated from data entry and survey entry. But anyway, the point is, let's say you're doing just regular data entry and there's a piece of data that you don't have, um, but you consider to be required or desired, at least you can flag easily um, when you come back and you just take a look, you can see that you, as a reminder, you need to fill out that particular field at some point because it's blank. Uh, I think it's a, a great um, eye-catching way to fill in missing data. There's, there's the data quality rules that would let you identify blank fields, but that can be a little overwhelming just so... Yeah people are aware you might have a bunch of blank fields where you just don't have any data or you haven't entered something or, or whatever but this way um it's it's just right there in front of you in black and white or red and green or whatever yeah and this was the other project that we had that um that uses uh, branching logic to check to make sure all the values are, are done. You can see here that it says complete now and incomplete. Um, and this was the one that uses the show hide section. Um, yeah, that's sweet. But that one's a bit more complicated because you have you basically have to build uh, fields to to capture those um, those values. So like here for the section, the, sur uh, you know, survey status. And, uh, so each section would have its own calc text and, um, that's hidden. And that's what's applying the value. And then you have to make sure that you have the sections, whereas this is just straight up, you know, fields. Um, yeah, but you're customizing the view based on the coordinator or investigator or whoever's their needs and we're trying to make things as accurate for them as possible and as easy for them to see what's going on and you know if they know how to build this then great if they don't know how to build this then they can ask for help from us or watch the video or do whatever but you know you want to find the best way for a project to gather its data accurately and also work best for the coordinator. Yeah. And, 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 you know, there are two different methods doing slightly different things, but, you know, some people might appreciate the, the color change over the complete un incomplete kind of thing or vice versa. It's nice to have different ways to come about to provide solutions for somewhat slightly different problems. Yeah, and and you know this these things kind of open up uh, other avenues. Um, I was working on adding, you know, little because you you could add these little images uh, the same way we do for the home page. Uh, these little images here are from uh, a site called Font Awesome, and they and it's part of Bootstrap or Bootstrap uses them. And you can see here this FA Circle Play. It's like a it's an image, but you can use them as icons. And so you know the next thing I was messing with was adding, um, adding those images here. So that way, instead of just having a color, you could also have like a little check, you know, or an X. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that would be really good for any color blindness issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing, too, similar to the way, the way this is set, 
um, to where you have an actual status um, because you can use jQuery to update the label values. It's just figuring out how to remove that label value because um, you can grab the entire label value with jQuery or JavaScript. It's just once this changes, how do you revert back to that? And you know, so it's it's more complicated because you have to, you have to grab that date that that value and put maybe put it in a variable or something like that. So that way you can revert to it um, if you need to. So yeah, those are you know just little avenues. This was kind of quick and dirty, and um, you know the next it's I guess you know the first iteration of this sort of stuff, but. It, it opens up more avenues for things that we can design.